So thanks for joining the guided tour of machinery. Um, my name is Mauro Morales. I work with the machinery slash cloud foundry team and I will be your tour guide today. Please try to keep your hands inside the vehicle. We don't want you to get hurt or anything. And this is going to be the map that we're going to be, um, the different sites that we're gonna be looking at. First is the machinery inspect command. We're gonna learn how to create a system description. Then is the show command where we're gonna learn the two different ways to view a system description. Third, because the weather is really nice, we are going to be able to see some docker whales. And uh, the fourth command is going to be the compare command, which is uh, probably the one where we're gonna see the most interesting things because um, we're, we'll, we're gonna be able to spot differences between systems. And finally, it's gonna be the export command where we're gonna be able to take these system descriptions and convert them to uh, Kiwi images or AutoYAS uh, descriptions. So, the first command, the inspect command, is as simple as just saying machinery inspect and a host name or an IP. And um, is that readable or? I'll go a little bit higher. That should be better. Okay. So we ask machinery to go into this system. I need to have uh, SSH access so that it actually works. And machinery has started to inspect the system we want to see. And uh, what's basically happening is that machinery creates an SSH connection with the root user or another user that you can give it, but it needs to be, or to have the right kind of permissions. It will then go into, for example, system A and create a system description for system A. And we'll, you, you can keep a list of all these descriptions. So you can have, for example, system A, system B, and all the different systems that you want to have. And, uh, but the other interesting thing is that you can have one same system, for example, like system description C, where we have the same system just in different times, um, different states in different times. And that's pretty much it. Um, we, we can look at it. it. It's still taking a while to finish. But I, I have a few copies here, so you don't have to wait for it. I'll just let it, I'll just stop it for now. But you can see, um, if I do machinery list short, you can see all the system descriptions that I already have on my system. And of course, this can take some time, especially depending on how big the system is. So now that we have um, one inspected system, let's see what's inside of that system. For example, if I wanted to see what's inside machine in the leap, a system installed from the lib DVD. And I can see the first thing it tells me is the operating system, which is in fact an, oper an OpenSUSE lib 42.1. Then I can see the list of packages. This is the text view of a system description. And it's probably the most useful when you're working in the command line. But um, we also have a HTML view and I will talk about it in a minute. I just want to describe a little bit what's happening here. And it's just that inside of a system description, machinery groups things together into things that we call scopes. For example, one scope is the operating system where we save the information regarding the operating system. Another scope is the packages where we have a list of all the packages. Um, like I mentioned, machinery will SSH into this system. And with, for example, RPM, it will get a list of all the packages that are inside of a system. Uh, same thing with patterns, but in this case, instead of using RPM, it uses zipper, for example, um, and so on for the, all the different other scopes that we manage. The nice thing about machinery is that you can also extend these scopes. Machinery is completely open source, so you can write your own scopes and uh, your own way to inspect these scopes. Uh, like I mentioned, you have an HTML view in order to look at what's inside of a system. And uh, we were already looking at the 
lib dvd i can tell it to look um, via the html view and machinery will start a server and uh, open a website for me to look at it as you can see here this is the system description lib, lib dvd and i can see all the information related to it it's separated in scopes like i already mentioned so i can go and see for example which kind of users are um, installed in this uh, default installation of Leap. I can go and see, for example, which are the change configuration files. And I can even go and see in detail uh, what's in, inside of one of these files for in some cases, not, not for every file that you will have here. Okay, so now you've seen the two ways in which you can show a system description. The third is um, inspecting Docker containers. Here, um, I will show which Docker images I have. And you can see that, uh, for example, I also have an OpenSUSE lib image. And again, I can say, Sorry, machinery inspect container. The name of the image that I want to see, so open SUSE, leap. And um, in this case, I will name it something specific, for example, uh, something as creative as docker leap conf, for example. And uh, I also can even say which kind of scopes I want to inspect. And for this, I will tell it, um, wait, I think I'm missing an equal here. Let's say I just wanted to check what operating system it has and which packages are there. And you can see that it starts uh, looking into it. This one is much, much faster for two reasons. One, we only checked at two scopes. And second, you can see that it only found 125 packages because um, Docker images are meant to be much smaller, right? And what's happening here? It's a little bit different than our uh, other inspect command because uh, machinery first needs to go and look for the Docker image. Then it spins it up, so it runs a container. And in that container, machinery runs the exec command in order to get all the information out of it. In this case, it would also be uh, with RPM checking which kind of um, packages are installed there. And finally, it creates again a system description. Cool. So now we can get into a little bit uh, more complicated, um, or not complicated, but more into detail using the compare command. Now we can start analyzing what's happening in, um, what differences are there in, in two systems. Uh, like I was mentioning, it's interesting to see that there are uh, much less packages inside the Docker um, image. So let's have a look at that. For example, let's compare the lib dvd against the docker lib conf. And you can immediately see here that all of these packages exist only in the lib dvd. And of course, there are a lot of them. Then I went all the way down, but I can also see that there are three packages which are only existing in the Docker image. So that's also interesting. One of them seems to be OpenSUSE Release Mini. So there seems to be that they are installing certain packages that are specially reduced in size for these uh, images, which is great. But then uh, we don't have more information because I only extracted those particular scopes, but I will show you more into detail. Um, what exactly is happening here? Machinery takes two different descriptions and goes in, uh, through each of the scopes that are existing in both descriptions and then checks for every difference that it can spot. It will tell you specifically, these are things that are only in one of the systems, things that are only in the other system, and things that are in common, so they are equal in both systems. 
And things that are, for example, a package that is in both systems but has different version, different release, different vendor, and stuff like that. And all of this for all of our scopes. So you can get an idea of the specific details that are in one system that are not in the other. For this, we also have an HTML view, which can be useful, especially if you're analyzing it manually and not running it uh, in some other command. So we can do compare of these same systems that I was just showing you. Just add the HTML flag. And here we go. First of all, Machinery will tell me it cannot compare all these other scopes because I didn't inspect them, but I will still show you with a fully inspected one. Um, you can see here that um, the operating system is in both OpenSUSE Lib, so we don't have differences there, that's great. But here is what I was telling you about the packages. You can see that the Lib DVD, of course, has 1800 plus packages more, which makes sense, you probably wanna have a lot of packages available there, but the Docker image uh, on different from the DVD has only three packages extra which are uh, specific for, 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 for example here, like I mentioned, the OpenSUSE release mini. Then the other interesting one is uh, they, there are three change packages, for example, and you can see here that both uh, it, both systems use the CA certificates, Mozilla, but they differ in the checksum. It would be interesting to know why, what is there, what changed between one and the other. Uh, and then, like I mentioned, there are the common elements. These are all packages that are in both images and that uh, they have absolutely no difference. They have the same version and everything. Now, let's... Um, Let's go and play a little game. Let's find out, let's spot the differences between, uh, just like we, what we were doing, but go in, in more, into more detail. So we want to see what are really the differences between lib and a Docker lib. Well, first of all, like we mentioned, uh, well, I, first let me show you a completely inspected Docker lib. Okay, so this one has all the scopes as you can see here, they are all available. And the uh, first, the obvious part was there are many less packages in the Docker lib. This makes sense, you want to make the image much smaller, right? Uh, but let's have a look, for example, at the change manage files. Oh, because the screen is a little bit too small, you cannot see here, but here it's meant to say deleted. You can see there, down in the bottom corner. And you will see that there are a lot of deleted files. And if you start looking into detail what, are, what these files are, you can check that most of them are .mo's. So they probably deleted all the translations. If you're running a Docker container, you probably don't need it. Uh, you have them in your uh, main system, and the idea with the Docker container is that you run as small as possible, right? So it makes sense why they want to remove this kind of information out of the image. Um, what else? Uh, Vagrant. There's a lib version of Vagrant. You can download it from, oh, it shouldn't be happening. There. So if you go to atlas.hashicorp.com, open SUSE, you will see all the images that are offered uh, to download via Vagrant. This is very helpful when you're developing. Uh, for example, here I have the Vagrant file, and uh, all I need to do is to set this line in my Vagrant file, and it will immediately download the OpenSUSE uh, lib or OpenSUSE, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, for example, and I can start immediately doing development um, in one of these machines. But again, what is different between those machines and the installation from the DVD? Let's find out. Vagrant lib. Uh, 
Again, you can see it's the same operating system. There's nothing changing there. Packages. Of course, they also want to make it much smaller because otherwise you would have to download the entire DVD. That wouldn't make much sense. Uh, but they also add a lot more packages than in the Docker image, for example. And why is that? You, we can see, for example, that they have Git. That makes sense, right? You are going to be doing development inside of it, so you probably want to have Git. Um, we can also see that they have Ruby gems. Chef is there. OK, that makes sense, because you can use uh, Vagrant to do configuration management into that machine. So it's necessary that it's there. And you can spot things like this between your own systems with uh, machinery, which is great, because you can tell, OK, do we have the right machine for uh, sharing across our team for Vagrant, for example? Or should, should we make our own uh, image? Should we uh, use one that is on the internet, but add some, put some additions in there? Perfect. So another question um, here. The differences between Leap and Tumbleweed, I mean, it's kind of obvious that we expect that packages are uh, newer in Tumbleweed, but uh, are there any other differences that we can spot? And for that, I also have a Tumbleweed DVD installation, I think. Maybe not. Oh, yeah. OK, now we can see immediately the first time we see that the operating system is different. We have here OpenSUSE Leap on the left and Tumbleweed on the right. Um, sorry, one thing I didn't mention is um, you can see that machinery pretty much splits the page in two. On one side, you will see everything that is related to Leap. On the other side, you will see everything that is related to Tumbleweed. Um, again, packages. There are a few packages that are only in Leap. There are a few packages that are only in Tumbleweed, but the difference is not that big. Um, but now we see this big number here. There are a lot of change packages. What happened there? And it looks like our assumption is correct. Uh, Image Magic, for example, it's simply uh, newer in Tumbleweed. So the version in Leap is 6.8, the version in Tumbleweed is 6.9. And so on with the, all these other different packages. They are either the version is newer or it's a different release and so on. Um, users, for example, you can see that there are a couple extra users that appear only in Tumbleweed but not in Leap. This is a default installation, by the way. I haven't really played with it uh, much. Groups also related to the, to the users that we just saw. So there are a couple of extra users there. But in general, it seems um, it's quite a similar, so they don't differ too much, except for you got uh, the latest of the, of, of the packages in your tumbleweed, which is great. OK. Now I want to show you another command called export. Um, we will start by doing the export Kiwi command. Actually, I will just show you that one because it will be faster as well. Machinery export Kiwi. And we need a Kiwi directory where we're going to put it. Uh, for now, let's just put it in temp OSC 16. I need an equal here. Um, let's export uh, the Vagrant Leap machine and see what happens. Great. So now I have exported this description. Uh, and if I go into this directory, First of all, you can see this README to give you an idea what you can do with this exported information. 
And uh, you can see down here that you could run this command in order to build this uh, generated description or generated configuration so that it creates a machine for you. Um, I could run this, but it can take around five minutes or something like that. So I previously already had one version for you, and um, you can see it here. It's the... Oh, wait. Sorry. Vagrant, I saved it here, Vagrant lib. And you can see that um, Kiwi built a QCOW machine for me. Which is great because then I can simply just go to Libvirt and start this machine and that's exactly what we're going to do. I don't need this machine here. This is the KiwiLib machine, I already have it there, it just needs to get started. In the meantime, let me show you. Um, basically what happens here is that machinery takes the system description and it will convert it to um, either a Kiwi or an Autoyast um, configuration file, which you can define depending on the command that you use, either export Kiwi or export Autoyast. And this can be quite helpful. For example, if you want it, if, if you have a, an old version of a machine, an old description, an old state that you would like to see, you just put it into uh, a Kiwi image, um, you, you use Kiwi to build the image, and then you already can run this machine. You don't actually have to save the machine to do it. Because this was uh, generated from a Vagrant machine, you can see that we don't start with the GUI, that's normal in, in Vagrant, for example. And uh, I even have the users, so in order to log in, I need to use Vagrant. And uh, one characteristic of Vagrant, for example, is that um, it syncs or it mounts the um, folder where you're working. So, and it puts it into slash Vagrant. So if I go, for example, to slash Vagrant, you will see the files that I had in the copy that I was using to develop. And if I move on my machine into that folder, which is uh, this one right here, where I showed you the Vagrant file, you will see exactly that, that I have a Docker file there and a Vagrant file. And if you see here, they are exactly the same files. So the entire image pretty much was generated, not only um, the expected packages that should come from the distribution, but also um, the extra stuff that you put in there that you need for development. Okay. Cool. So we've seen uh, pretty much all the commands that I wanted to show you. And the idea in machinery is that all these commands will get together and make machinery more powerful, more powerful and give you um, the ability to do additional tasks that you're already doing as a system administrator. It's not meant to replace the current uh, tools that you're already using, but instead kind of give you uh, ad additional tools. So for example, doing these comparisons can be really nice, especially if you're uh, trying to migrate a system or um, if, you're, if you want to find out about the packages that are, are being used in a completely different distribution that you don't know. Uh, in, in this case, uh, machinery can inspect um, Red Hat, can inspect uh, Ubuntu, can inspect um, CentOS. So you, you can have all these different um, images next to each other and see what are the differences between them. Some use cases that I would like to talk about um, is are, for example, you can quickly check a state of a system. So, yeah, I mean, instead of doing this, you could keep backups of all your systems and you could just uh, go and find where you have that backup. 
you can uh, start the machine and you can go and specifically check which version of a package was installed or um, what um, was the state of a certain configuration file. Instead of that, uh, you can just use machinery. For example, I have my list of machines here. Um, I keep, for example, copies of my machine, the changes that I did in, in the upgrades that I've done in Tumbleweed for the last uh, three changes, for example. And I could go immediately and see what was the version of a package uh, for Tumbleweed uh, of the 12th of June this year. So machinery show, we put this one in particular. And uh, we can see, I don't know, image magic, what version was it running back then? And you have it right here. You don't have to start the machine from scratch and everything. It saves you a lot of time. Another use case could be for configuration management or uh, Docker files validation. So uh, having an example with a Docker file, you can see here, Um, this Docker file will basically just install OpenSSH, LESS, and machinery into a Docker image based on OpenSUSE Um This, of course, is uh, quite small. I am based directly on the original image, but many times you actually base your Docker files on some other uh, image that you don't really know what's happening in there. And uh, you could use machinery to check out the results of the built image and see that it actually has the changes that you want and that it doesn't have some other code that you wouldn't like to have there or some, other, some packages or some users or something like that. And for that I have, um, I think I got it here. Yeah, so I have, for example, the Docker machinery and I can see specifically the packages that were installed there Oh, uh, sorry. I would have to compare it, right, to the um, base Docker image. So I can say compare so Docker leap image and Docker machinery. In theory, it should have only those three packages, but of course those packages have uh, dependencies, so we see that it installed uh, a couple of other things. So machinery is there, OpenSSH is there, less is there, and all these other packages that are dependent either on one of these three also get installed there. But the interesting thing is uh, you see that in this case, also for example, the repository for machinery was added, but nothing else. I don't see anything strange happening. I can check that there were no changes from the original um, machinery image that would affect the resulting uh, Docker machinery, sorry, the original Docker leap image to the uh, Docker machinery image. Another use case, for example, could be that you, can, you could find out uh, if one of your servers was tempered, right? Um, if you compare it, uh, if you keep uh, constant uh, descriptions of your system, you could compare to a previous time and say, okay, something weird started happening, let's see how was it uh, before. And uh, I'll show you a little bit of that. I've prepared these images specifically for that. So it is going to be, um, well, let, let me just show you. So temper before I called it and temper after. Let's look at it on the HTML view. And um, like I said, I prepared these images specifically, so it's going to be very obvious. You, can, you will see the differences, obviously. But for example, there's one user that only exists in the server after it was tampered. And so, okay, who created this user? Why did it happen? Um, unmanaged files. You can see that there is just one SSH, uh, sorry, one shell script 
file that was created in the after the server was tampered why is this you know it's it's suspicious already what is this doing um, also I can see that the boot crop boot part CFG file is there in both ser uh, systems so before it was tampered and after it was tampered but there are some differences in the size of it so machinery can you can quickly see here what are the uh, what's the diff be between one and the other and I can see for example that certain code was added into this file so you it, it can help you spot out differences much easier than if you would have to go manually in one and the other um, even though of course like I mentioned I specifically prepared this one to be uh, really easy to spot on um, Another example could be if you have a failed migration, for example, that you can you have a machine that you're running um, as a virtual machine or as a hardware machine, and you want to move it, for example, to AWS. And uh, I think I have the example here. Wait. So failed migration before. And I'm going to compare it to the failed migration after. Okay, again, I prepared this one to be easy to spot. But one thing that you see is that um, after the migration, there is this package here, the kernel easy to. That makes sense. I wanted to move it to AWS, so it needs to have a kernel specific to those um, easy to instances. But um, I should also have the package that was, the kernel that was only for the previous um, system here, and I don't have it. I, it. You can see it here, but that means that it's still installed in both machines. I wouldn't really need to have the kernel send uh, after I already migrated. Why is this happening? Uh, if I check on my unmanaged files, I can see that there's also this file that uh, exists only after the migration. And it, it's a migration, right? It, it, it shouldn't, there shouldn't be weird files out there just because. And uh, you're trying to copy pretty much everything. You just want to change what is specific to the infrastructure. And in this case, we see that the boot do purge kernels is there. Um, what this could have meant is that when the migration was happening, and the system failed to remove kernel shank, and therefore it never removed this file. This file is, uh, when this file is here, and the system is booted, the system knows, okay, I need to remove the old kernel that, that I find in this machine, but it wasn't able to do it. So at least it gives you an idea of how to find these issues uh, easily. Again, if, if there were many changes, of course, it would be a little bit harder to spot these specific differences, but um, it, it would be much easier than if you are trying to guess out of the blue. And uh, there are, of course, uh, more uh, use cases that uh, you can come up, and uh, or maybe there are some use cases that you have as a system administrator or as a, or as a developer, and um, it would be great if we can discuss about them or see how machinery could help you with that. So that's pretty much what I had prepared for you. And uh, if, I, if there are any questions, I would be happy to take them. OK. No questions? Mario? Um. So how much uh, storage does an inspected machine consume on the, on the, on the machinery? Okay, so the question is how much storage does it uh, take to have a, a system description, right? right. Well, uh, it will depend on the system, right? What, what's inside the system. It will also depend if uh, which scopes you decided to take uh, from that system. And it will also depend if you decided to extract files out of that system. So uh, I can give you an example in my, my whole machinery uh, folder for what I just showed you today. Uh, 
it's uh, 89 megs for all these base images. So it's actually quite small. If for some reason you have VMs or something like that in your server, well, and, and you extract those files, then it will take whatever that amount of space was. But the nice thing is that machinery will not, sa not save, um, for example, the configuration files or manage files, machinery will check. And if they haven't been changed, it will not make a copy because it's the default uh, from the RPM installation one. Only if it's changed, then it will make a copy. Any other question? Okay. Well, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you very much. If you are interested in machinery, you can just go to the machinery page here. Uh, we have more information about it. Uh, or you can simply check the code in GitHub or write us an email to the mailing list or to my personal email. Thanks.
Și ca să problema asta există în de că o să merge în Italia If you know anything, if you don't already know everything that I'm saying, I'm worried. Well, wait, 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 let me take. Aha, avoiding disasters. Okay. So you expect to have some questions? <laughs> Or not? I expect you to help me answer the questions. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Yep. Și 
Și de ce nu vine?
Și nu pot să fiu bogat și nu pot să fiu așa.